Hello and welcome back to From the Workshop with me, your host, Brandon Hart. We are here once again in the fabulous NimbleLink nerd lair to talk about how to pick the right technology for your IoT device. That's right, with all of the excellent options when it comes to LTE connectivity for your IoT device, how do you pick the right one? So with technologies ranging anywhere from NB2 and LTEM uh, up through category one, category three, category four, and up, how do you pick the one that's the right, one, right technology for your particular use case and for your device? Well, the way we think about it is there are a few crucial uh, features and factors that play into the right type of technology for your device. Really kind of the, the main headliner that everybody focuses on is the bandwidth, the throughput, the speed of the technology. Uh, so here at the kind of the low end, we've got devices that are quite slow down to you know 50 kilobit per second type of connection speeds uh, on up into megabytes and hundreds of megabytes of, of uh, uh, throughput speed at the top end of the LTE range. I should point out um, 5G plays into some of this as well as the standards and the technologies continue to evolve. Uh, 5G will cover both ends of the spectrum. Right now, most of the focus for 5G is on the really, really high end of the speed. Uh, so residential broadband, um, uh, commercial broadband, wireline replacement, um, you know, big uh, mega pipes, gigabit speeds, that kind of stuff. So most of that doesn't really play into what we're talking about, but eventually as we get to, into the evolution of NB2 and on uh, into 5G technologies, that will become more interesting. But for now, let's just focus on LTE. Uh, so in addition to the actual speeds, there are also things like the latency of the connection. So when I say latency, I mean, uh, when, you, when your device goes to try to send some data, how long does it take before that data is actually being sent? You know, that, that setup, uh, that connection, the sending of the data itself, how long before that data is actually in transit? Um, so in addition to just a slow connection speed itself, sometimes the latency can play an important factor in how your data is transmitted. Um, of course, on top of all of that, there are things like power. The higher speed, the higher end modems are going to use more power to send your data because they're sending a lot more of it a lot faster. Um, a lot of times over multiple antennas and things like that too. Whereas at the low end, things are optimized for low power. They also tend to be optimized for lower cost at the lower speed end of the, of the uh, range here. So um, you have a couple things to focus on there. Um, a little bit less obvious perhaps is what type of connection is your modem going to um, require, is your device going to require? Are you going to have you know, very infrequent types of sensor data transmissions where your device maybe wakes up a couple times a day and sends sensor data into a remote server and then goes back to sleep again? Or are you going to be streaming data, video, whatever, um, over a constant connection uh, that requires something to stay up, stay active, stay connected, and, uh, and always be available. Um, or the connection direction. In other words, is your connection a mobile originated or a mobile terminated connection? Is your device initiating the connection into the remote server, or are you remotely trying to access the device that's in the field? Uh, so that can make a big difference. These lower speed, um, you know, kind of low power optimized devices, really they're the ones that need to initiate those connections. So mobile originated is best for this type of use case. Whereas at the higher end, you can do things like mobile terminated connections, actually reaching out to the device that is constantly awake and listening for incoming connections and so on. Uh, so all of those things play in. Um, one more thing I'll mention before we get into some actual use cases that you might be able to relate to a little bit better um, is the idea of mobility. 
So there is in fact a difference. I know all of these are, are you know, LTE devices. They are uh, meant to be uh, connected to these radio networks that are out there in the wild and kind of all over the place. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're all optimized to move a whole lot. There are a lot of use cases for devices that are just going to be stationary. They're going to um, be a, a just fixed to a, a light pole, or they're going to be stuck in the ground, or they're going to be attached to something that doesn't move. Uh, and there may be specialized technologies, such as NB-IoT, that work really, really well for stationary use cases, but not for mobile ones. So another thing to keep in mind. Okay, so those are the considerations we're going to go over, but let's actually apply those to some real world use cases. Let's say your device is, oh, I don't know, an asset tracker. An asset tracker is a device that is meant to be highly mobile. So right away you can say, well, NB IoT is probably not the right use case for you. Um, you know, asset trackers that aren't very mobile there may be a use case for those somewhere, but typically if you're tracking an asset, then when the asset moves, you still want to track it. Kind of kind of the point of it a lot of times. Um, so maybe NB IoT is not the best fit for you. So you may look at something like LTEM. But then you have to take into account other things like, you know, how much speed do I need in an asset tracker? Well, I, I don't need a whole lot of speed in an asset tracker. I'm pretty much sending position, maybe a little bit of sensor data, but not a whole lot more than that. So um, low speed is probably going to be best for me because I don't need that big mega pipe that I can get with some of the higher end uh, LTE categories such as, um, you know, three, four, six and on up. Uh, even cat one may be a little too much for me at that point. Uh, asset trackers are also typically battery powered. So since you are concerned about the amount of power that the modem draws, get something that is optimized for low power. Again, we keep kind of trending this way. Um, and, and that is because LTEM is a pretty ideal technology for something like an asset tracker. Again, it's meant to be mobile, it's meant to be low power, it's meant to be low cost. Um, and uh, typically the uh, throughput speeds that you need um, LTEM can more than handle for a scenario like that. Um, so, all right, cool. So asset tracking, LTEM is a pretty great fit. That's probably where most of us would recommend you take a look. Let's talk about another use case though. Let's talk about stationary remote monitoring or remote monitoring for short. <laughs> uh, most remote monitoring op uh, 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 opportunities and use cases are going to involve you know, sticking a sensor in the ground or sticking a sensor to something or, uh, you know, having sensors collecting data from a number of sources and transmitting that data out to your back end or, or a customer uh, system or something like that. Um, so right away you can tell sensor data, typically not a whole lot of data, probably don't need a big pipe to send that tiny little bit of sensor data through. So right away, we're gonna, again, kind of focus down at the low power side of things. Um, cat four, even cat one may be a little too much unless you're generating just a whole lot of sensor data to send over that connection. Uh, so let's look over here. Um, the other things that we have to keep in mind is things like latency. Again, um, is my sensor data going to be absolutely critical to get in real time? Real time is not the forte of these low power devices. Um, real time is really meant for the low latency devices, you know, LTE category one and up. So if you are monitoring a critical um, sensor of some sort, a, a critical device, um, you know, if that temperature peaks uh, above a certain threshold and that needs to, to, you know, someone needs to be alerted right away, no delay whatsoever. Um, in those cases, you might look a little bit more toward category one. If you're just collecting sensor data over time, um, you know, maybe even just missing a sensor read or something like that isn't that big a deal to you. Um, you don't need that data to be, uh, to arrive as soon as the sensor data itself is generated. Now we're talking about something that NB is particularly well suited for. You'll find it uh, starting to come out in a lot of 
you know, soil moisture monitoring systems or energy monitoring systems or, um, you know, even, even uh, you know, light pole monitoring systems. There are all sorts of different types of things that you might want to monitor. NB2, NB1, these technologies are really great for those stationary use cases where you just need to get that sensor data and collect that sensor data over time. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about one more. Uh, this last one will be a little bit different and that is video surveillance. Video surveillance is quite a bit different for a lot of reasons. Number one, we're talking about a lot of data. Um, and not only that, we're typically talking about a lot of data that is constantly streaming through that connection. So right away we can eliminate these lower end, lower power devices. Uh, they're just simply not gonna be able to keep up with the amount of data that we're gonna send through that connection. Typically also, uh, video surveillance requires something that is going to be very low latency um, because if you are streaming video to something or somebody or an AI or whatever the case may be, chances are they're going to want to act as soon as something suspicious or something of interest is noticed. And uh, that's not something that you necessarily want to get, I don't know, an hour later after something happened. You want it to happen uh, as soon as that, that uh, thing is filmed, that, that event occurs, you want somebody to be able to see that and take action immediately. So latency is a real uh, consideration in that case. Um, stationary versus mobile, not as much of an issue because you know we're not talking about devices that are optimized for stationary or, or mobility uh, at this higher end. It can really be either one, um, which is good because video surveillance a lot of times can be either stationary or mobile, depending upon what kind of thing uh, is being surveilled <laughs> at the time. Uh, so that can be an, a nice thing to have. Um, you also have to bear in mind that these higher end devices are going to pull more power. I mentioned that earlier. These higher level, these higher category connections will draw significantly more power. And so um, a lot of times those need to be wired into some sort of a power source in order to be able to sustain the power draw that these devices are going to have. Okay. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Hopefully you get a sense of kind of which sort of use cases are a good fit for what type of devices and what type of LTE technology. Um, you know, this, uh, this'll be a conversation that we continue to have, uh, especially as the technologies uh, continue to advance and 5G starts to become more of a practical use case for these types of IoT devices. Um, but for now, hopefully that's a pretty decent guide to you know, how to pick the right type of technology. Of course, there are way too many use cases out there for us to be able to try to give good examples that cover everything. So if you have something unique, please let us know about it. Leave it in the comments down below or shoot it to us to workshop at nimblelink.com. Um, but until then, please do find that subscribe button and go ahead and hit that so you don't miss the next From the Workshop episode. Um, and uh, we will see you in the next one. So until then, have fun building.